much all I knew about him. He's a human main, so he kind of knows what humans trying to do against undead, which is why he punishes it. Yeah. Look. Ready to work. If the altar is in the right position, Ready like it to stores work. the first cam that you creep. Ready to work. I like sealing off personally. Yeah, I don't really like the farm here immediately. Okay. But actually, I probably should show you my screen on Discord and it will be easier for you to see. But I hope it doesn't. I have a sound bug sometimes around this. Uh... Wait, I'm, no. I'm watching from your stream, but I can watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will stream okay. on Discord. It will be better. Say okay. something? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm not getting the bug because sometimes I have a sound bug. Yo, thank you, Paquito, for the resub. Okay, now I'm playing and nobody's subbing, and then I start doing a replay, and then everybody's subbing, and I have to shout at everybody. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay, so uh, your wall off here, I think you should put the. Uh, maybe the altar was like. No, no, I think it's okay. You could have done the farm right here. Because like, now this kind of blocks you if you want to make a building here later on. So you just kind of have to be crisp with the building placement. And then now the barracks probably could have been closed as well. I mean, it's not a big deal. He's not going to run in there with a the hero usually, but it's good to be uh, close to be sealed off because otherwise later it's too easy for him to enter whenever he wants. Against Undead, I recommend scouting with the first footman. And when I say scouting, I mean to ignore this little acolyte here, which for a very long time also, I'm still to this day, it annoys me so much that a little acolyte comes scout me that I sometimes even chase him. But... You need to know what hero is opening with and whether he's expanding or not. So I would just run across the map. Oh no. Okay, yeah. That <laughs> that's not ideal. I think this camp... Will I rewind? I think this camp, you just... Uh, you need to summon the water, bring it here, and wait until all the units are there, and then you engage so that you do maximum damage output right after you engage, and you get those creeps out of there. If you ever get your water ensnared or even one unit, it's kind of bad. You can very easily avoid that. And see, now you attack before your water is even made. So, uh, I will show you after how to do it exactly. Because usually I wait for that trapper to throw his ensnare before I summon the water. Yeah, so you don't have to do that. The worry is the sea giant, because sometimes he cleaves. So you want to kill that guy as soon as possible. Yeah, I will show you after how to how to do this. Our forces are under attack. Now you did the right thing, you went for the expo, you get the right creep. Yeah, now you shouldn't target the DK. Um, the problem with targeting the DK is that your melee shot timer is gonna run out basically. And then after that you're gonna be fighting him, the skellies, and the creep, so you're gonna lose everything. So you just kill the creeps, and he has limited death coil. See, he has only one more. So he could steal one of the creeps. Big deal. Those are like Mirgul warriors, like level 3. Doesn't matter. You're already level 2 as well. Yeah, so here, just target the creeps. What the hell? He's doing... What? So see, like, this is something that you should have scouted. Like, he's playing ghouls. He's not supposed to have ghouls. He's supposed to graveyard and uh, go for fiends. And then his ghouls have to be mining lumber. So the fact that he's playing a ghoul build, it would have been nice for you to know. Because then now you could have pulled back the peasants that were back to peasant form and sent new militia immediately. Which you do, but it's a little bit later now. He's only playing a ghoul build because he knows you're going to expo here. And uh, he's trying to kill a lot of peasants, basically. Oh, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Can't let that happen. He... He didn't have aura, so you're not supposed to get surrounded. Definitely should have been able to get out of it there. I think I just abandoned the plant to expo there. Yeah. The it does feel like it's late, but uh, it's like it feels like there's no good choice because your start now just was like kind of bad altogether. So now you're going to go into an unviable style because of the entire bad start. Job done. Basically, I didn't scout well enough by not saying he's not going ghoul, uh, yeah. fiends. And so if I had just seen that he was going ghouls, then, then I should just abandon the whole idea of going expo. No, 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 no. You still expo. I think you can still expo because this is such an easy map to expo. But when this militia is almost done, the first five, you send them home. And then you send five new ones. And then you will still clear the camp. 
and then you will still be able to set up expo but ideally against ghoul builds you should be trying to get level three which maybe you could have used some militia here to do this or maybe you could even delay the taking of the expo and then do this and then once you're level three what elementals just like kind of like red Ready ghouls but on this map i still think you would be able to get this you could even have gone to the marketplace, bought some uh, cloths, and then like you, you wreck ghouls even more. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna look at one of my games now, but yeah, I, I don't think I have any games against ghouls in particular. Let me see. I have one game against on this map, but it's uh, against standard. And I need to share my screen. Okay, you can see that, right? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You can see that, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a kind of old game. So it's there, but it's against DK at least. And then uh, you will see like uh, the wall will be crisp, the creeping of the first camp. It's good because like it's it's a game you can see my POV, but since I'm not playing right now, I can very easily talk over it basically. Mm -hmm. So you see the altar, like there should always be the farm. I kind of like building a farm on the outside of my wall, a farm line uh, next to the tunnel, because then that prevents the stuff from happening on the outside, and that might save your heroes sometimes basically. And then uh, yeah, just pay very close attention to how to creep. The first camp, because that's how you should do it on every map. On Autumn Leaves, on uh, Conceal Hill, on Last Refuge. You always make Water Elemental, you wait until everything is there, and then you kill the highest DPS unit, usually in that, inside of that camp. It's universal on every map. So yeah, I do a double Riley Point on my Altar to make sure that uh, if I wall off, it's not going to be trapped inside. And then we'll see my scouting. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. Yeah, this is kind of an old game, so I don't really remember it too much in details. I will fast forward a bit. Yeah, so first footman headed straight across the map. The way you do it, it's like you just take your footman and you right click it inside of his main base almost. Okay. You really want to go there, see if there is a graveyard, and then sometimes you won't find him immediately, then you will go look around basically. Okay, so you see I made the water and then I target the sea giant first. Because you're really worried that guy is going to cleave if you don't kill him first. You don't want him to, if he cleaves, he's going to kill a lot. So I see DK, Graveyard. I know it's completely standard build, so now I'm going to send back my footman to my Archmage, basically. Or maybe you can even try to steal something sometimes. And then we're going straight for the expo after that. I even tried to get the Acolyte, but I didn't get it. Yeah, it got denied. And yeah, here, if he would show up already, I yeah, see he's going to show up kind of like you. See, I'm just kind of getting started with the camp. I don't even care about the DK. I'm just, I just want to get those creeps out of there so I can expand. Um, if he calls the creeps, he's not calling your peasants. If he calls your peasants, he's not calling the creeps. Right. So yes, he's going to get something, but you're also going to get something out of it, right? So remember that. He okay. can't call everything. He has four skellies. It's nice to get the skellies out of there, but also I don't want to usually completely ignore. But you see, I sent extra militia. I had the initial four or five, and then I sent three more now to help out. This is the point where I would definitely lose that creep to a coil. Yeah, you can use... <laughs> I, I use movement, you know, like... A, yeah. I use move, or I think it's move commands on it, and then I, you just put one or two units on it to try and lower the hit points a little more to or slightly around 100, because coil does 100. And then you click it down, and if you get the experience here, it's pretty good for you. And then now I got double claw. Like this is the absolute dream. Yeah. And um, usually undead will try to bomb rush your peasants a lot here, so just always stick around your expo. A very good rule to have is that you should never leave your expo area up until the expansion is around eighty to ninety percent done. And that counts for like any map and most matchups. Like whenever you expand, just make sure you sit around. Because once the expo is finished, if he starts killing peasants, then you can very easily replace them 
and it doesn't delay your expansion anymore. Your expansion's already up. Whereas, like, if you lose them before, it delays everything. Your lumber, like, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, now Expo was almost finished. Always get one tower with one peasant. Now, I even delayed that a little bit because I defended uh, pretty well in the first place. But see, I'm skipping the art mage. And make sure you build up your peasant count. Like, your macro needs to be smooth. Always get a couple of footmen and also peasants in your main base so that you build up your uh, number of peasants. On Lumber, against Sundeads, if you fast expand, which you should always do, you should try and build up to 13 Lumber Peasants. Um, do you know, like, if you do a selection of units like this at the bottom, do you know how many units you see per line? Uh, I think six, right? Yeah, six. So immediately after you expand and you have your tower on the way, the first, next step is to tech. And once you've teched, you should always do the selection in your main with all your Lumber Peasants. And then if you have, like, an entire line plus one, it's seven. And that allows you to know exactly how many you, you need to add at your expo. So you can start queuing a lot of peasants at your expo. Mm. So that's 13, you say? Yeah, 13. And then you will get the first lumber upgrade as well. So after tech, count how many peasants you have on lumber in main. It's going to tell you how many you, did, you need to get on expo. Get lumber mill shortly after. And then build up the peasant count on the expo. And then you can start towering up. And uh, walling off your expo is very important. Like you need to have like really good SimCity, basically. And yeah, like now you can start kind of doing the dance, going around. Uh, you can, with your next hundred lumber, you can get defense, and make sure you don't overextend and fight too much. Like now, if the fiends got on top of my footman, I would just run away to make sure I don't fight before defense. And also, there is really no point fighting in the middle of the map here. You want to fight near your expo to buy enough time for the buildings to finish. But you don't want to like fight like crazy on the other side. And yeah, you see the wall. Uh, I will go back a bit. Yeah, you see the wall should always kind of be like that. Like ideally, the arcane tower should be in front of the peasants because if you make it behind, you can just go here and chain rain of fire or like nova them. Whereas like now, if he does, he's gonna lose a lot of mana. And you should build in front to prevent the fiends from getting in too close easily and killing the towers. And ideally you wall off with like a shop and blacksmith, but you can also do it with blacksmith and racks, in which case you will put the shop between your two bases. That's like what Sok, for example, has been doing. What do you think is the right amount of towers in the main and expo? I think there is supposed to be one guard and one arcane in both. Yeah, it really depends. Like, um... A lot of undeads, they started going on in blind on the main base because they realized that too many humans, they were skipping towers there. So it, ideally, you kind of want to know what the opponents might do, and then you can adjust from there. If you think the opponent loves to go for banshees and never attacks you, you can even go like very minimal towers. But if you think there is a chance that he's going to push you with that pit lord, then you can get like yeah, one arcane, one guard. I would say on the expo, uh, one arcane and two guard is even better probably because you don't have militia in the expo. Yeah, now it's just going to be very annoying cancelling my uh, shop all the time. I shouldn't even have remade it so fast, to be honest. It was obvious it was going to get cancelled. When you reach tier 2, eventually, your first priority is always to start castle. Sometimes you won't have the lumber for everything. It's so hard to have the lumber for everything. You see, I built up my peasant count. Mm -hmm. So the priority is always to start castle immediately first. And then when you, get, when you have the lumber, then you start mount tanking after that. But castle is more important because castle gives you access to staff, orb, and paladin. So basically everything, and knights. Whereas like a mountain king will only help you so much with a couple stone bolts. It's not like mountain king is going to come out and you're going to dominate or something. So now I'm delaying my tech a little bit. It was not my best macro for sure. Okay, now I started tier 3, I started mountain king as well. And you have the choice between going double racks or uh, double racks, double workshop, or one racks, one sanctum, and then double workshop. If you think the opponent likes to get a lot of fiends and push, then you should get double racks probably. But you should never over make knights. If you make knights um, up to like uh, five or six or even seven, and the opponent goes benches, you've already almost like auto lost. You should basically then kill your own knights up until you should st stick to like three or four max basically because otherwise it becomes too good for him to try and steal them with banshees and there's no way you can do anything about it 
Whereas like if you have yeah. three and triple staff, what is he gonna spill? You know, you're just gonna stuff them out. Right. It's so hard to see the possession going off though, honestly. Yeah. If you play with default zoom and like it's the main thing you need to pay attention to, then you'll be fine, I think. Yeah. So now I know he's going to do a push pretty soon. The goal is always to buy a little bit of time. You want to try and target the towers a bunch here. So that if he morphs the destroyer, it's like not a full HP one as well. Yeah. I'm even going to use the invuln. So his point is push before your tier 3 finishes because yeah. that's online. So they're always going to attack at this time. Yeah, and trying to like force a mistake basically. Like if he could kill my hero or something, yeah. that would be pretty good for him. Able to get the potion, luckily. And yeah, now he's trying to siege the shop before I can buy orb and stuff. He knows that before I have knights and paladin here, they, there might be some damage that he can do. But you can see my sim city is literally saving me. Imagine I didn't have the wall in front; he could just dive the towers. Yeah, it's crazy that you're defending this with just your archmage, basically, and your other heroes creeping. Yeah, it's the wall and the towers. We here are doing yeah. everything, basically. Yeah. Wow. And that this makes a super huge difference. Like if I make one single building in a different position, I might just lose the game on that. It's like that's why it's so hard to play against Death Knight and against Sunday, is because you have to get every single little detail like perfect. If you make one mistake, that's it. You're just like instantly dead. So now I'm just waiting to build up an army. Ideally, you don't want to fight before your pala is there. And now let's say he dies my towers. I'm gonna let him fight them and I'll try to fight him with my army but then he's what he's gonna do a lot of the time is like pull back and then fight outside of the range of towers but yeah there's no reason getting too uh, over eager here the towers are there to buy time even if they die they will have done their job then you know like I don't want to overcommit mm -hmm. to the fight that's why I'm pulling back here immediately then he goes back to work on towers and yeah once you start getting a few knights those fins are gonna die pretty fast and yeah like the the priority when you finish tier 3 is to start Paladin and buy Orb and stuff. And then if you only have the gold for that, then go for that. But then only after that do you go for Knights. Like don't start a bunch of Knights and then lose your shop and then you don't have Orb and stuff. Because Orb and stuff are, are extremely important here. Against this style. So now I saw him pull back, so I'm happy to go and creep. And this is where like a lot of humans, they fight too much, I think. You should just be trying to build up to 80 supply without like overfighting or something. Mm-hmm. And like, if you can get heroes 4-3-3 three, three, and he doesn't have benches, he lost. If he has benches, then that's where you need to like get some breakers and some mortars, basically. Like, once Sundead starts going passive like he is now, you already know he's going to be playing with benches, even if you didn't see them. A great thing to do, even if you got multiple flying machines, is to scout with one of them. So I bind one single flying machine in group number two, as you can see here, and then I scout a lot with that flying machine. That's because I want to see his exact composition. Imagine you see like six statues, and maybe it starts to it's time to start spamming flying machines because he's gonna show up with mass destroyers. Imagine he gets a bombs, you know, like then you can know he's not gonna have as much banshee and destroyers. So then you can mix in some uh, sorceresses and stuff to like uh, slow them. But you still go for pretty much the same army here. And uh, if you had played double racks, like let's say this is you playing and you had played double racks here, you would stop knights at three or four, like I said before, and then now you would have sanctums to basically be able to uh, send back curse and also do a lot of damage with the feedback on heroes or the benches. Do you prioritize the defend, or not the defend, but uh, um, the melee defense upgrade? I oh, know the attack. You do the... Okay. Yeah, because uh, the defense does not affect nuke. So if he like just... Uh, if he just nukes your knights, they're still going to die very quickly. And also the attack, like, I mean... Your army consists of mostly knights and breakers there. And also, uh, flying machines and mortars, they will do their job without any upgrades. So ideally, you should get plus one melee every time for the attack. And then ideally, maybe after that, you can get the plus one defense, but I think getting the plus two attack might be even better. But I mean, if you're getting the plus two attack, you're probably in like first world problems mode because you're doing pretty good in the game. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm trying to secure this uh, creep here and then pull back. Oh, it gets too dicey. He tried to go for the Archmage. I had to use Mana Pot to save it. It's okay. And I got staff anyway to save whatever gets caught at the back. But here, 
Don't get your stuff possessed. Just run away. Make sure you save everything. Get that second staff eventually. Remember you bought staff as soon as it was available, right? So now there should be the second one available shortly after. And uh, make sure you buy that immediately so you keep an eye on it. Oh. And yet yeah, the goal against this army is to build up to 80 supply and have a, a bunch of breakers, three to four knights and three mortars or four. I would say don't overbuild mortars. Like don't get like six, you know, it becomes useless. Unless the opponent has like 16 benches, then you can make six mortars, but that's not going to happen usually. Uh, three mortars, they're one-shot benches anyway with uh, frag shards. The thing is, he's going to call Nova Mortars, obviously, because he's what, it's what he's scared of. So you could build up to four, maybe even five. But yeah, six stars being a little too much. And then seven, eight is like, no way you should get that. That's cheese. I don't know why I'm getting plus two attack actually here for Mortars. I think yeah, it's kind of an old game. In retrospect, I think getting the plus two for Knights and Breakers is like way better. Or maybe even plus three, because then the damage is just so insane. And then in the always scouting too, like you you left a footy at his mine. Yeah, yeah. Do you do that most games? Yeah, it, I think yeah, I want to know if he expands and stuff. And then, it, it, like if he expands, you have a, always you always have a choice. Do you go to a hundred and you push, or do you take a third base yourself and then go to a hundred later on? Mm -hmm. It's very important to know whether he expands or not, especially because I've played him many times and sometimes he he does take an expo with benches and stuff. But yeah, here, um, I already have 80, so I just have to work on upgrades. I always get a TP. I don't know why I'm not getting a new town portal here. That would be nice to have. I even got a scroll here. I think that can come in really handy, especially if he mixes an A-bomb and then he has a disease cloud. And in the fights, you're going to want to open with Stormbolt on a Banshee and then just Mortar click on it, which is why, like, you can see my control groups. One is all of my units, and then two should be like flying machines and casters and stuff, but now I didn't really have much of that. So instead, two was like the flying machine and Maltars, but I definitely feel like I should have had at least like maybe one Sorceress here. And the Maltars, usually, they will have their own control groups. That's because you want to click them very easily on benches, and usually I will put them on three. And yeah, that will be the goal in the fight. Bolt one benchy, target it immediately. Here, basically, I'm trying to take a third as a way to say you have to attack into me so that I can have the good position. Because if he doesn't attack and I get a third, it's very bad for him. I will have so much gold. But he, if he then attacks, then I could have a good position here. I even engage into him because he's in a tight choke. See, I, I bolt the Banshee, put the Mortars on it. And you can even move back your Knights here, right? The Banshees, they have to come in to possess the Knights. Yeah. And now once he starts stepping in like this, a lot of his stuff is going to be very exposed. Like the Knights can do full damage to the, to the Fiends. And even his zeros are going to be exposed here. Even though they have AMS, you can bolt and target. And I have 4 3 3 here, which is the dream. So now I go for the Lich. He has clutch invuln just on time. And yeah, the Mortars die very quickly, as you see. And now is when he usually moves in for the possession. So it was kind of easy to see that one. That's the only thing you need to be focused on when you see Benchies moving in is that, like, you know, <coughs> there's going to be some big possession. I'm kind of stupid, so I went for Devotion. I would recommend just going Divine Shields. I mean, when somebody plays this DK uh, Lich into Banshee style, they either are going to have only two heroes, or they're going to have done uh, a Pit Lord push, which you will hold, and then go into Banshees. In either case, there is no silence. So having Divine Shield is an absolute must here, because it's literally going to save you. So I made quite a few mistakes. Like I say, it's, it's an old game. Oh, and he's a good player, too. And now once like you, you see like there was no point to stay and fight more. He still had AMS active. And I killed all of his benches. I can literally let AMS run out now and then fight. And then I mean this army, once there is no AMS, like the fiends are gonna melt from knights. But then we're just reworking towards building the perfect AD supply now. What does the AMS actually do for him? AMS tanks magic damage. So if you do like Bolt Holy Lights, then the Fiend won't take any damage because the AMS mm. is anti-magic shell. You know, he's tanking all of that magic damage. Uh, I don't know if you bind your uh, inventory hotkeys, but I recommend at least binding the top two one. Do you? Uh, yeah, actually, I have two button or I have 
a Naga Trinity mouse, and it has 12 buttons, and I have uh, the first two buttons are my top two. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, that's good. Like, my, my staffs, I think, are pretty good because I bind, like, I bind it to a hotkey that I already got used to. Yeah. Somebody asked in chat, is Innerfire worthless because of destroyers? I mean, you don't, you don't really want to have priests, I think, in your composition. Remember, you have a lot of workers because you made 13 on lumber and then you have 10 on uh, gold. So because of that, your worker supply is 23. His worker supply is 5 acolytes and 3 ghouls. So that's uh, 11. So it's, it's a big difference, right? It's 12 difference, 12 supply. So because of that, you cannot afford to even make a single mistake in terms of composition. So I feel like one priest doesn't necessarily belong in this army, right? He's going to be there. He's going to heal like a little bit. It's overcommitment. Like you see now, I barely made it to 80 and then we had to fight and he still had a big army. Imagine if I, if I went for priest with master, like I would have had even less units of like something else. So against that composition, I don't think you should go for a priest. Against Crypt Lord, you can. But against DK, I don't really like it. And yeah, this game, I didn't make much flying machines. It's because I'd, I was just able to scout so well that he wasn't going for destroyers at all. And that was important. So yeah, don't spam flying machines without reason. Just make sure you scout a bunch. And kind of know it's a big part of... Like, he, he's not the one trying to counter your composition. You're the one trying to counter his a lot of the time there. Yeah, now I do the same thing as earlier. I take the expo and then he kind of has to attack into me. Or if, it, if he doesn't, I will have double expand and... It's going to be in trouble, basically. Because my income is just going to be insane from there. Because there's still some gold left in the main, but not a ton. Is it, is it to have more than one orb? Or does that matter? No, yeah, you only get one orb on the Archmage. The triple staff is pretty important, though. But like now, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't prioritize getting the third staff. I need to get to 80 first. Once that's there, then I'll get the third staff. Hey, I'm trying to build up my perfect composition. Try to never fight before you have three mortals if there is benches, because otherwise you're just going to get everything possessed. And then now he shows up. I have four knights. He has one benchy. I'm like, okay, well, good luck. He uses two possessions. Yeah, a couple more benches showed up here. Yeah, just clutch holy lights. Target whatever fiends you can with your knights. Stuff that's being targeted. I actually mixed in one priest. Look at what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely melted. And finally, he's going destroyer. So now this is when you press the alt key for your workshop and you start getting some flying machines. Mm -hmm. And make sure you're on point with the holy lights. Make sure you have a good rhythm with the storm bolts. And then if you can do that, you can see like this army just kind of had no chance here. I made the completely wrong upgrades, by the way. Like. You see here in top left, I made plus three attack for flying machine, and uh, which I had zero. But <laughs> I had one flying machine, and the only thing it did was scout the entire game. And my mortars now had plus three, but they already one shot benches pretty much. So that was completely stupid by me. I should have done plus two, plus three attack on knights and breakers, and they would have smashed the ground even more than they did now. Basically, mm. uh, you have any questions? Oh no, man, that was cool. That was awesome. Okay, let's do uh, quickly. You can sh can you share your screen and then you're gonna do a game on Tide Hunters. I wanna see you do the basic creep routes. Okay. Make sure you do it correctly. All right, I'm stop watching yours. Yeah. Let me know when it is. Yeah, one second. Let's see. Okay, can you see? Yeah. Okay, okay so host a game on Flow uh, by yourself on uh, on uh, Tide Hunters. Yeah, and then just start it without any opponents. But remember, like you have to press continue game because it's gonna tell you like uh, game is over or whatever because there is no opponent. Okay. Let me 
continue game. I think you play with a way too big zoom. I will definitely recommend lowering that because like humans okay. so micro intensive, there is no real benefit to playing with such a big zoom. That's why I play default. There's not many humans that play with a big zoom. I think Johnny Cage might be like one of the few exceptions. You're saying like farm up here? Uh, pretty much it should be aligned with the town also. It's like too high now. Okay, and that's I something see. like you should like pay right very here. close attention to like just now, like when I showed you a VOD and stuff, because then you can copy it to the letter. I think yeah. it's very easy, like when you watch a stream or when you watch a VOD to be in like in entertainment mode, you don't really think about details, but that's something that will help you improve a lot is that you actually really focus on what a player is doing and then you try to emulate it. And yeah, use the hotkey for everything. If you ever press any portraits and tell yourself that you need to learn that hotkey and like press it because that's something that's going to hold you back a lot as well. No, the peasant is P. Make sure you press that. I think I will also turn off the allied. Uh, can you can you pause maybe? Sure. Yeah, go in options and then uh, gameplay. And yeah, the team colored live bars that should be off. This is like complete garbage. And the uh, the enable formation movement toggle is also should be off. And the show numbers for cooldown should be on. On the top right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then back. It's gonna tell you to save. Yes. Save. And then, okay, continue. You can resume. Hello? Oh, oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I recommend binding your five militia that you're gonna send to your first camp in control group number two. I think you have six on gold. Seven okay. now. Oh my that okay yeah. bind uh and then the the oh yeah the third farm i didn't mention that that's on 19 always so you have 19 now third farm immediately and then did you bind the five peasants okay and then now you pay attention to your altar when the archmage is like 90 to 95 percent made that's when you send the militia so now basically yeah uh the rally points of your barracks and altar, yeah, it's kind of like where your archmage is, maybe a bit more to the right. Are you really used of this zoom? Are you attached to it, or do you think you could lower it? Uh, I think I could. What um, is it? What is it currently? Um, I think it's twenty three hundred. Is that? Yeah, I recommend lowering it like quite a bit. All right, you, your second footman is going across the map. Uh, rally to your barracks on your altar. Oh, yeah. And let's pretend that you scouted, send that back to your hero, and then now send militia to the expo. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can leave. I will show you now my, myself how I do the builds and explain you, uh, explain you the little details of it. Okay. I will reshare my screen or my game. Yeah, what the hell? I can't select walk up. Okay. There it is. Okay, you see the game, right? Uh, let's see. No, I don't see your game. Uh, one second, tabbed out. Okay. Now? Still nothing. Uh, you might have to like uh, click around up until you find the window where it's like streaming. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. You can see the game, right? You're watching now, right? No, it's loading your screen. Okay. It says live, but it's just like a, a box that's going in a circle. Maybe try to like close it, reopen it or something. And then tell me when you see. Uh, 
Do you find pressing P to make peasants very inconvenient? Honestly, I was using uh, the, no the a mouse that I don't normally play with, so it didn't have my hotkey. It's my. Oh, you mean just button. now? Yeah, just now. Okay. Okay, yeah, because if you ever press any portrait to produce something, I would advise, like, you change that hotkey if it's inconvenient for you or something. Yeah. Peasants? I'm, I'm gonna, Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to end. I'm going to back out of this because it's not allowing me to view what you're doing. So. Uh, okay, I will, I will restart the stream once again. Do you see now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, P is very far right on the keyboard. So unless you have very big hands, which fortunately for me, I do, it's very hard to press that and get used to it. So I would advise, uh, I don't know if you know that, but in StarCraft Brood War, uh, to make probes, it was P. So how did they adjust the Protoss players? They put their Nexus on 9 and 0. Because 9 and 0 on the keyboard is right above P. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, they didn't have a choice because like, you only have so few groups and you can't put that many units and, and stuff in it. And you couldn't rebind uh, hotkeys back then, I think. Whereas in uh, StarCraft II, a big adjustment was that they put probe on E, so all the way to the left, and that was so convenient. It's so much easier to press E. So I would recommend to anyone that has to press the portrait for peasants to put their hotkey on E, because WT Champions is like the in-game hotkey support thing. And uh, yeah, they do it really well. Uh, my first advice for you is like whenever you play War 3, you should be pretty focused before the game even starts, just because the loading screen is extremely short. So you don't have much time to think about your builds. And if you ladder, you only have like three seconds to realize what race you're playing against, which side you're going to make your altar on, and what's the game plan, and it, which is very short. So don't be like on your phone or whatever, or thinking about something else. Like you really need to be like somewhat focused, because otherwise you're gonna already going to start making mistakes and you just snowball into more mistakes, basically. Uh, You've seen me play, haven't you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, like uh, it's it's very important. I think a lot of people they maybe not as focused when they go into it as they should be. Now we're gonna look at the basic build order. Once we get in game, I will very quickly select my five peasants, send them to gold, select my tunnel, produce two peasants or three, and then select one peasant that's headed towards the gold, the gold, and uh, make my altar with it. And it's going to be very fast. That's the order that I think is very good to do things in when the game starts. And once you get used to it, you'll do it very well all the time. But like you, I saw that you were struggling a bit with that order. So let's see. It's going to happen even before the victory thing happens, if I'm fast enough. Yeah. Which usually I am. Let's see. What is it? Yes, you oh. 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 That is crazy. Oh, what is it? Yes, you are. Oh, <laughs> My wife's watching the NFL football oh, games, so oh, don't mind her. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, so here it's always like kind of in line with the tunnel. It will be the same on the other side. Like if the okay. tunnel was here, it will be like here, you know? Not too far on the outside, not too far on the inside. Like you don't want to block yourself. And then uh, I don't know if you do your build order exactly, but then the next one here that comes out will go into gold. And then the way to know how to time the second farm is that, let's see, first he goes in. And then now when this one is halfway through done, then you grab one from gold and you make the farm. So you wait for this yeah. one, you wait for this one. And then about halfway now, you make this one. And then the next one goes into gold. Once he has, you will put that on lumber. And then you don't have to worry about the gold ever again in the game. What is it? Job done. Always keep an eye on your altar, start the Archmage immediately, double rally points. So I right click here, I hold shift and then I right click here. So my Archmage will go here and here. It will never get stuck inside. And then third farm, do you remember what I said? Um, yes, 19. Right? Yeah. So usually you can do it with these peasants. If you want to do a farm far away, use the peasant from the barracks. I'm just going to kind of... Oh, actually, I guess. Let's pretend it's against Undead, I make it at the front. And then now, once you've done the third farm, that's when you can bind uh, the five peasants that will help you creep. So, the Dust Footman I will put on three. And right click here, right click it back home. Okay, okay. If I see no hero, then maybe I will go up there and wander. Now I, I look at this. 
Archmage close to finishing, we send the Militia. So I took my Militia control, I did Militia, Shift, right click. So they move here, I make the water, I wait for them to get a little bit closer. And now we go for the Sea Giant and hope, pray to God he doesn't cleave. That would be very bad for us. He hits three times and he doesn't cleave, so this is perfect. Let's pretend I saw like a DK move there in the graveyard, so I don't really care, so I go home. And then now, as soon as this is finished, like, what I did here, when the creep was about to die, I took my Militia, I right-click the creep, and then I press Shift, and I press Return to Work. So literally, they kill it, and then they return to work, and I don't need to worry about them anymore. So it's a lot of, like, pre-programming, basically. Is it Shift, and then you right-click it? Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was only this creep left, so I took my Militia yeah. hotkey, and I did right-click on it. You know, shift those cues the next action, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I right click this creep, I held shift, and I pressed return to work. So these guys are basically going to kill the creep, and then as they are done, they are going to return to work, and then I don't have to worry about them anymore. And then just because sometimes I've had mishaps with my second control group, sometimes now I already rebind something else, but now I'm about to bind new militia to go creep my expo. And you don't want to waste time. Like here, you once you've picked up the item, you could literally take your army and do attack move here here at the expo so as soon as it's done you start running immediately you want to min max everything basically can you shift attack like the, the anchor toss guy and then shift attack the berserker and then shift attack the trapper and then you can but i do it manually because it's like kind of fast to kill the sea giant and then you kill the kill the troll berserker or whatever his name is the green one See with groups is very smooth navigating between units. Usually if you get a third farm you can do it now, 28 or 29, it's okay. If you do this building on this map, you don't have to get third farm because now I'm gonna spend all my gold into the expo anyway. And then a great thing to do on this map here is to stand here and then you pull that from up there. And then you don't have you're right next to your base to defend it, basically. Then obviously, like, this is universal. If you're standing here and then the opponent shows up, you have to disengage the creeps and then defend against the guy. It's like, peasants die extremely fast. And also, whenever you send militia at this stage, when you're fast expanding, you never want to send all of this. The way you're going to send militia now, like, let's say I, I see him here coming. I will go to my base quickly. I will take two or three, no more than three, never more than three. And I will press militia out key, shift, attack move here. You see on the minimap? And then now I don't need to worry about them. Now I just worry about this. Like these guys, they are on autopilot or whatever. Like they're going to get there and they're going to attack whatever is stepping on my lawn here. Like in this entire area. They are on attack move like over here as you can see. So that's the flag. And then usually that's the part where you lose these and then they're replaced by these. And then immediately you reproduce peasants in the main base to build up your, your lumber count pretty much. And yeah, usually you, you do five on the tunnel, but then you take one and then you make a tower pretty quickly. Okay, so you don't build the tower until your tunnel is done, or like just before. No, no, yeah, yeah. Like uh, when you start building the tunnel, then immediately you take one of them and then you, you build the tower. Pretty much. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. And then now you should already be thinking about your entire wall. What, what is it gonna be like? You know, like if you start making towers over there, then usually you wanna block off in front with one blacksmith first. Blacksmith is usually the one tied to uh, the tunnel, and then you can do racks here or. Uh, or a shop but yeah the shop here will be kind of awkward because it's on the right side so imagine it's pushing here how are you gonna shop you're gonna have to go around like you're kind of gonna be stuck behind so it's good to think about those things and like how you want to do your wall exactly but yeah maybe i'll make the towers like this here so you take your this okay let's go for you one more time uh try and get you to perfect the build execution typically if i do um, like build a blacksmith is that after I tech? Oh yeah, yeah, it's after after the tech you get lumber mill, then you start towering up, and then after you've done that you get the blacksmith. Because you want to start working on your wall, but you don't really, you don't really need the blacksmith. You're not gonna use that until very much later in the game anyway. So. Okay. okay share your screen whenever. Okay. I if you did. if you press the portrait for peasants, I'm gonna fucking lose it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, duly noted. 
<laughs> can you see me? Uh, not right now. No. Oh yeah, yeah, I can. Okay. Are oh, you got it? Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. The, what was the order that you're gonna do the actions in the start? I'm gonna send or I'm gonna double. I'm gonna click my town hall, create two peasants. No. Send my. You're gonna send five peasants to gold very quickly. Then you're gonna click on your town hall, produce two peasants, and okay. then you're gonna grab one peasant that's going to gold, the one that's the furthest away from the gold mine, ideally, and send it to make the altar. So send two gold, produce two peasants, make the altar. Okay. Focus. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. I think the reason why you have a hard time figuring out where to put your buildings exactly is because you have a different zoom. When I played with a different zoom, I kept not walling off my base properly because the buildings look different size and stuff. I don't know how hard it will be to go to default, but you should definitely still lower it more, maybe like a 1900 and later on move to 1800 or something, because that's going to increase the quality of your micro as well. You can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Fine. That's fine. All right. Let's do the build up until when you have taken the expansion. Okay. Or maybe even longer. We'll see. Yeah. Let's let's go there first. Okay. Yeah. Halfway. It is. It is halfway in production. Yeah. I should have done it up here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's a zoom matter. Because your buildings look so different. Art mage, yeah. Did you select this color on purpose, by the way, for your own color? I think so. Do you like that? Don't you like it? Doesn't it look awesome? It looks like uh, the grass, <laughs> almost like stealth. It looks really weird for me. You don't need a double rally point for footmen because they can't get stuck anyway. Oh, that's true. Okay. Look at the altar. It was almost finished. Yeah. Oh. Damn, you had a single rally point, I think, for the altar. <laughs> Luckily, you didn't get stuck. Okay, produce footmen. This is like where uh, the macro starts sleeping a little bit. So you really need to focus. Mm -hmm. Peasant footman, peasant footman all the time. Peasant footman. I don't want to see your gold spike up. Oh, I didn't do that. There you go. <laughs> all right. We'll go to the expo. Wait for the militia to be there. Don't engage before the militia gets there, because now you're yeah. missing so much of your damage. You, sh you just have stayed back. It's fine waiting a little bit. It's better than engaging the way you did now, because now you're going to take extra damage. You're going to get slowed and everything. Yeah, Find something on, on your second bind now, because it worries me that you have a bunch of units that are in your main base. You might send them somewhere by accident. Uh, you mean... Bind no, no, yeah, 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 like... You you had these units binded earlier, so bind, make sure you bind something in group number two now so you don't send your peasants that are in the main base by accident somewhere. Okay. Take brilliance immediately. Every time you're a level, you should always kill it very fast. Then now you can do the pull I showed you earlier. Put okay. attention into where you put the tunnel, though. It should be on the right side. No, no, right side, right side. Remember, right side. No, no, no. At the bottom. Yeah. Like here. Yeah, up against the trees. Up against the trees. Like here? Yeah, the closest to the trees possible, because you're going to mine those trees. Right side here. Yeah. Um. All right, with everything, then you take one, you make the tower. Yeah, great. Then pull the Murloc camp from the high ground with the Archmage. 
you're missing one footman slightly uh, behind. And you also have one, yeah. You also have one right below this, if you scroll down a bit. No, 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 uh, near, near your expo. Yeah, this guy. Where? When the tower finishes, now you morph it immediately. And then let's pretend this is an actual game when there is an opponent. You're going to sit here for a little bit, and then when expo is at 90%, you can head towards the center. Look at your XP. See, like the, one, one little camp in the middle will give you three here. So this is like a okay. super solid build. If you do that build against the other guy that you played before and you execute it well, you're going to be fine because yeah. then you'll get level three, you'll have water level two. But yeah, now as soon as the expo finish, one peasant in each town hall and one, one footman. Yeah, one in main. And then one footman, yeah. And then now you can move out and do that small green camp here to get level three. As soon as you have 210 lumber, you're going to tech. But until then, you, you can already queue a bunch of peasants on your expo because you're going to need them. Okay. And then the main is going to take very soon here. You can do a return cargo or whatever to get like enough lumber to take. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, you can take. You can take. Start lumber mill in the main. And yeah, make sure I you shift. did three farms. Is that a mistake? Yeah, it, I think it's okay. Like, if the execution was better, you wouldn't be floating gold anyway. And yeah. then even if you do, you can go to Marketplace and buy some claw or something. Yeah, go creep the shop yeah. to keep you busy. Not the Marketplace. Go creep the shop. It's under there in center. And then spam peasants on your expo. Do the counting exercise in the main base that I told you about. Wait. Oh, you counted it from the ones from the expo as well. Okay, I was like, you don't have this many in the main. <laughs> So how many more do you need? No, I got nine here, right? Five. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, but you selected from the yeah, expo right. before. So you have nine in okay. total, so you probably need like three to like, four more. Yeah. So you queue them, and then you yeah. will also get the lumber upgrade. You are about to be supply blocked. So get one farm somewhere. Yeah. And then start working on your wall at the expo and get one tower in the main as well. Oh, no, you never use the... Yeah, you always keep five on gold. Yeah. Okay, that's not bad. And then the tower above the other one. Okay. A bit more to the right, I think, the shop. No, no, immediately above the, the tower. Oh, like this? No, no, the, the tower immediately above the other one. Okay. No, no, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, yeah. the shop, take another peasant. A bit more to the left. Yeah, imagine Finn's attacking you. You'd want to block... No, this is more... This is too much to the left. Now he can attack the shop okay. without being attacked by the towers. So one more box to the right. Yeah, this this might be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah this. Yeah. I would say this. And then you will build a farm at the top of that. Okay. And uh, one more tower right above the other one too. No, the, the farm more to the left. Uh, more, more high, like above the shop. Yeah, yeah. See, now your maximum block is Finn's. Okay, I Attacking see. that tower. Uh, God, God, God. It's always one arcane only. Yeah. And then one more guard above. And then now your tech probably finished. And I would recommend that you should practice that against computer a bit. And uh, don't try to creep too much. Just focus on the macro, because the macro is already very challenging for you. Once you get the macro right, then you can start creeping more and fighting more. But sit at your expo as long as you need. Yeah, uh, tier 3, tier 3, then MK. Yeah, supply stuck. Yeah. Uh, no, the towers here, they, they go next to the peasants mining gold. You should kill one of your own footmen. That's a better way to unsupply some food. Okay, I see. This one, yeah. And then make the tower right next to the, your peasant line on gold. Yeah, right exactly here. like this. Yeah, that's perfect. And then you would do the same on the other side, like on a little bit left. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then you did you get lumber upgrades? Mm, no. See, see, that's the challenge. I can know that you just have so many things to do. You get the second racks now and double workshop. Uh, the second racks you should make outside of the wall usually because, I mean, it's kind of shit for him to siege that. Mm -hmm. But the workshop you can make on the inside so that they're, they're kind of safe. If you can, the other one you have le room bottom left maybe. Okay, maybe you can sell the tower and then make it more to the right. 
Yeah, and get an Arcane Tower in the main. I would advise yeah. warning off completely, by the way, like, because now imagine if he has, like, a, he buys the Pit Lord and then he runs it and he's gonna kill everything. Whereas, like, if you're sealed off, he cannot run in. Like that? Yeah. I think it was walled off. Unless, do you think he can run through here? No, no, he cannot. And uh, you see now, by the way, the farm next to your altar. If he has, if he has fiends and he sits next to your altar, he can shoot that tower easily. Whereas if you did my wall, he could not yeah. shoot this tower very well. Maybe with one or two fiend max, and then he doesn't kill it. Uh, in terms of items, I recommend like the archmage is always carrying the uh, the auras or like whatever that you find and the damage items. But any ring and gauntlet goes on the MK. So now you should definitely okay. transfer that. So that, that's not an arcane, remember, only one arcane at the expo. That's a guard. Yeah. Yeah. And I would recommend not to get upgrades in this scenario up until very late. If you have like 60, 70 supply, then you start to upgrade the attack. But before that, the priority is on getting units. So now you pay attention to your tech. And yeah, tier 3 is about to finish. So you should be standing next to your shop now. You can buy orb okay, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then your mountain king has a spell to take, so always bolt. You can go bash against DK, but clap is also okay, whichever. Yeah, spam those knights. You get two knights. You get animal war. And now let's pretend he's not being aggressive, then you can start making a sanctum. Do you shift click kind of like you did with the footy? Do you send this into the base and send it right back? or? Yeah, like, I mean, on this map, it's very easy to find the opponent, so I would send it near his lab. Look at how much this flying machine sees. <laughs> it sees like 20% of the map right now. Yeah, wow. So if you send it somewhere, you will spot him from afar. And then if you have more than one flying machine, you put them all in follow on your Archmage. So you right click them on your Archmage, then they will just follow it. And then, so they give you extra vision as well for your army around you, basically, so you can get caught and creep jacked. And yeah, get Sanctum in your main base. Get a lot of farms at this stage. Don't, it doesn't matter. Like, just play, put them here yeah, in this area, in this area next to the lumber mill. You just need to be able to produce. And the lumber mill, you should try and make safe. There was a space at your expo, I think, on the right side of the tunnel where you could have made the perfect lumber mill. Uh, over here? Yeah, yeah. And you keep rebinding your units. You should just bind them, like, when new units come out and stuff, but not rebind them all the time. Like the flying machine does not belong with the rest. Just everything right. should be on one. You can skill your own footmen. Usually like, if this was an actual game and you had a lot of footmen, I would say go creep and lose them. So I would have gone and crept the lab and made sure that okay. the footmen were tanking so that a lot of them die. Because when you're reaching castle tech is like when you're getting your uh, really high value units, so then you don't need to to have footmen anymore, they just suck. They will just feel experience and take like supply needlessly. Wait, you see, you should have been on 80 supply for a while already, like if you macro like super cleanly. The yeah. aura, the aura should be given to the Archmage. The reasoning is that your Archmage is the one hero that you can't afford to lose. You'll TP him before you lose him. Whereas the front heroes like Mountain King Pala, they can die. Ideally, you want to avoid losing them, but if they do die, they will do max damage before they die. And then uh, you can remake them from the altar, and they'll come back quicker because they're lower level than the Archmage. But yeah, you have a level to take on your pala. Like, always take your levels immediately. Like, you see the little one in the top left? You should pay attention to that. Uh, make sure that your screen is not too close to you so that you can see all those things. Yeah, I think that's about it. Let's try to just go to the perfect composition. So kill your, all your own footmen. Okay. Do you think your second staff is already available? Yeah. Yeah. You get that on the MK. So the first staff is always on the Archimage, second one is always, always on the MK, and then the third one will be on the Pala. Okay. And yeah, go creep the turtles in bottom left, produce some mortals, get frag shards, get plus one attack or plus two for knight. But you see, I told you not to make more than three or four knights. Now you made way too yeah. many. When I said when I said make knights earlier, I meant like three to four. Still, so now if you did that in an actual game and the opponent goes benches, you've already lost this game. So the only way for you to salvage it now is to kill your own knights. So kill like three knights, kill three of your own knights. I want you to build the perfect army or the the ideal army. 
kill three of your own knights and uh, make breakers. And you, you need animal war, by the way. You completely forgot animal war. Like, if you ever play knights and you see that upgrade down there, like, make sure to click it pretty fast. Like, now, with the build that you did, you should get two knights first, but then after that, you start animal war and enter third knight, basically. Okay. I got okay, you. So you stay on four, and you get Maltars. And keep track of, like, what you're producing. Okay, you're trying to build up to three to four Maltars, couple breakers. When you get to this stage in the game, if you have this exact economy, you can kill a lot of your own workers as well, of lumber. Because oh, you already yeah, have enough yeah, lumber yeah. to get around easily, and uh, you want to get to the strongest AT supply possible, basically. Yeah, holy light, the water. You can break the trees. It's better to attack okay. them directly, I think. Yeah, attack them directly, then they die in one shot. Instead of attacking oh, by oh. zone, you oh, can do. I see. I see yeah, mean. you can do a click. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So mortals in group three. Those breakers should be rallied to your archmage, and then kill some of your own peasants, and then you got two levels to take. Yeah. And the way you kill them is you press militia, or you can even kill them with the towers. Yeah, the expo it's way easier. Yeah, you shift attack them. Is that too many mortars? No, it's fine. Four is fine. But yeah, let's work on your control group. So everything that's attacking on one, a uh, knight breaker and your heroes, flying machine on two and mortars on three on their own control groups. Okay. Oops. Yeah, this is something that like, it's good to spam it a lot in game because then you really get used to it and uh, you will execute yeah, it much better. Right. Okay, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's enough. If you, do you have any questions or? No, the, there's so much there I need to work on. There's just a yeah. crazy amount that I'm going to work on. So okay, yeah. I recommend rewatching and then uh, taking a lot of notes because everything that I mentioned is like pretty important and you can't get any of it wrong because otherwise the entire game falls apart basically. <laughs> yep, exactly. Dang. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good night. Okay. All right. You too. Later. Later.